Hi everyone, it's Marissa from bumblebeeapothecary.com and I'm going to bring you along as I harvest some things from the garden and start fermenting some sauerkraut and just bring you along as I'm figuring out what I'm doing to kind of preserve the fall harvest here. First thing I'm doing is I have my fermentation crock soaking with some soapy water in it just to loosen anything stuck on and then I'm going to scrub that out really well and I'm going to add a little bit of bleach to the water too when I'm rinsing it and then rinse it really well with water and wash the weights. Also using a little bit of bleach is one of the tips that I learned to help prevent calm yeast from growing. That's the white fuzzy looking film that you'll sometimes see develop on the top of fermented foods especially if you're doing it in a bigger container like a fermentation crock so I'll just make sure to rinse that away really well but that does help clean everything to try to prevent that. So my main task today is getting these cabbages harvested and then I'm just gonna shred them up and put them into my crock to ferment with salt and they didn't all get as big as I'd hoped. The garden overall this year was just kind of okay and it's because I ended up being way busier with the meat chickens this summer than I planned on and so yeah the garden got a little bit less attention than it should have but you know overall considering all that still a great turnout and I'm going to absolutely make the best of what we can get out of it still so I'm gonna get these cabbages out for the beets I'm going to just leave those in the ground that's what I've done before and it works really well and just come out and grab them as needed we've already had some pretty cold weather with some freezing so their tops are a little bit wilted in some places but there's a good number of them in the ground and so that's what I'm gonna do with those. We have onions that will come back and we'll need to harvest those here pretty soon. We grabbed the rest of the winter squash out quickly the other day before the freezing temperatures hit for the first time. So those are already done. Pumpkins were really disappointing this year because we had some and then a squirrel came and ate every last one of them. So that was disappointing. So yeah, I'm gonna get started on these cabbages, start grabbing them out of the ground and then start cutting them up for sauerkraut. So I ended ended up with about 17 pounds of cabbages. So if I'm calculating that out right, which my brain doesn't do numbers the best during pregnancy, I think that's about 12 tablespoons of salt. So I'm gonna start shredding these up. In the past I've done this with a food processor, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do it with a knife by hand this time since I'm out here. I really didn't like the idea of getting my kitchen all messy. It always makes a huge mess to make a huge batch of sauerkraut. So I decided to do it outside just with a knife and just get it done and have the mess all outside. So I'm gonna get started shredding. As you can see, I'm opting for the quick method here. I'm just chopping everything kind of coarsely, leaving the stems in there. They're smallish cabbages, and I'm planning on this fermenting for quite a long time. So just adding salt after every few heads of cabbage and calling it good. I'll pound it down towards the end and then add filtered water to cover as necessary so that everything stays submerged. And I'm gonna call it good and I'm sure it's gonna turn out great. So that amount of cabbages filled my crock almost to the top. It was actually a perfect amount, which worked out great. So now I'm just gonna pound everything down in there, add some filtered water to make sure everything is submerged, add those weights, put some water into that rim, put the lid on, and then and this is pretty heavy and I'm obviously pregnant right now so I'm gonna wait and leave this out here and ask my husband to bring that inside when he's available later and then we're just gonna keep this in our kitchen that way I can keep an eye on the level of water in that water seal make sure it doesn't evaporate and then we're gonna let this ferment for a good long while at least a couple months I usually like to let it go for like six months four to six months gives you the best flavor I find so we're just gonna let it ferment and do its thing okay I hope that you enjoyed thanks so much for coming along while we did some harvesting and fermenting. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.